In this video, we're going to discuss how to transform continuous random variables using the cumulative distribution function and an explicit formula, and touch on the multidimensional case as well. So as an example, suppose the amount of gold that a company can mine is x tons per year, and you have some distribution to model this. However, your earning is not just x, it's actually a function of this amount of product, which is y, or g of x. What is the distribution of y? Well, we know the distribution of x, but how does that help us model the distribution of y? Well, we'll see. So, suppose, as an example, that x is uniform from 0 to 9, continuous. So what is the PDF of y, which is square root of x? Well, first, let's write down the range of x, which is from 0 to 9, and the PDF of x, which is just uniform between 0 and 9, and 0 elsewhere. So the CDF can just be derived by taking the integral of the PDF. But what about the range of y? Well, since y is square root of x, what values can square root of x take? The smallest value is square root of 0, so that's 0. The largest value is square root of 9, which is 3. So that's the range of y. But is it true that y is also uniform? Like, that seems logical because it's a function of a uniform random variable. But actually, that's not true. Because notice that these values of x, if you take the square root, will map to a y value of from 0 to 1. Whereas these values of x from 4 to 9, if you take the square root, will map to x y between 2 and 3. So that's not helpful because... Uh, there is a much larger range of values of x that map to 2 to 3 than to 0 to 1, even though these ranges of y are identically sized. So therefore, y's distribution shouldn't be uniform. It's not the same as x. So instead, we'll compute the CDF of y and differentiate to get the PDF. So from any y in this range, first, uh, we take the CDF at little y, which is the probability that y is less than or equal to little y, then since y is square root of x, so plug that in, and then square both sides. So we get probability that x is less than or equal to little y squared. So notice that this is just the definition of CDF of x evaluated at this point, y squared. So then we know the CDF of x over here, so just plug in y squared into x, and we get y squared over 9. Then just to get the PDF, just take the derivative, we get 2y over 9 for y in that range. So in general, to get the PDF of y is equal to g of x from x using the CDF method. First, you can just write down the range of x, the PDF, and CDF of x. Then compute the range of y, which is just what are the possible values of g of x over the entire range of x. And then start computing the CDF of y on the range of y, which is just the probability that y is less than or equal to little y, and y is just g of x here and then write it in terms of the cumulative distribution function of x. Then we can differentiate the CDF of y to get the PDF of y on the range, and notice that the PDF is zero outside the range of y. So in general, there's an explicit formula to do this, actually. So if you want to get the PDF of y, which is g of x from x, well, if y is g of x, and g is a strictly monotone and invertible function with an inverse that can be written as g minus 1 of y or h of y, then you can show using the CDF method that the PDF of y should be the PDF of x evaluated at h of y. So h of y is just the value of x that maps to y, and then times the derivative of this inverse at y, absolute valued. Okay, so let's do an example of how to even apply this formula. So suppose that x is again uniform from 0 to 9, and what's the PDF of y or square root of x? Again, this is the range in PDF CDF. Okay, so here the function on x, or g of t, is square root of t, and it's monotone on 0 to 9. This means that as t increases, square root of t also increases, so this means that g of t is an increasing function. And what is the inverse? Well, you can just kind of solve for t here, so we get t is basically equal to y squared. And then the derivative of the inverse is just 2y, take the derivative. So this means that we can plug in the formula for y in this range 0 to 3. Uh, the PDF of y is just the PDF of x evaluated at h of y, which is what value of x maps to y times h prime of y, or absolute valued. And because the PDF of x is uniform, so it's 1 over 9 everywhere, no matter what is inside here. And also we derive that the inverse derivative is 2y, so plug that in, so we get 2 over 9y. And there's also a general formula in the multidimensional case, but we won't go over it because it involves some linear algebra, but it's cool that this works when x and y are vectors. Thank you.